In this very special episode of Canadian Lawyer TV, join Leap as they take center stage at the inaugural Canadian Legal Summit with their enlightening tech talk. The title of this panel is Future Proofing Your Practice why Canadian law firms must embrace AI now. So I love the title of this. It sounds very urgent and I'm super interested to hear from our panelists. I'm gonna introduce uh, the moderator, Malcolm Muthalingham, who's going to introduce his co-panelists today. Why don't you come up on stage and talk about future-proofing our practices? Good morning, guys. We're gonna give you a little bit more of a practical experience as to how this, how AI has revolutionized a law firm. And we've brought up one of our clients who'll talk you through how he's changed his law firm from a single practice that he had five years ago as a real estate lawyer, and what he's done over the last few years in order to bring his practice to an area of where he's now using AI. He has associates behind him, uh, and he's building his practice in, in different practice areas of real estate, family law, walls in the States, um, and it's Michael uh, who's one of our clients, and I'm, and I'm going to bring up Michael Perlman as well, who's the CEO of Divorce Mate, and we will take Q&A after Michael let it's done. Good afternoon. I am humbled and honored. Malcolm, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, so we have a topic, machinery of law, and what I'm hoping I can express to you today is my journey. Um, I'm not an AI expert. There are some AI experts in the room. I think I saw Colin earlier. When you hear my story, you're gonna hear about somebody who is a business owner. I have two children, I had a father who was sick, and I had to relocate cities. So we'll go through my story, I'll talk about some of the higher value problems that came across my desk, and being somebody who wanted to capitalize on those opportunities, the strategies that I had to implement in order to capitalize, talking about the AI transformation. You will hear about my experience specifically uh, with Leap and some of the key takeaways from AI. And I think the speakers in the last panel did an amazing job. And I'm gonna be echoing some of those sentim uh, sentiments. What has not changed? I think it's important that when we talk about AI, we need to talk about the skills that are time tested true that will not change. Uh, and then of course, what does future proofing your law firm mean? So. Five years ago, 2019, I guess six years, I started my own practice, Lydiard Law. Um, I don't know if you guys remember 2019, 2020, everyone was buying real estate. So I fell into a very high volume transactional role. There's not a lot of time for contested work. And any of the contested work that I said yes to meant that I wasn't coming home. That was a working till 2 a.m. adventure. Um, and if anyone's nodding their head, you know what it's like if you run a transactional practice to be asked to do the affidavit for the court application, okay? And if you find yourself in that situation, listen to my story. So I had to relocate my practice for family reasons, which also meant I felt like a startup and I had to identify what I could do to grow my practice while still juggling two children, um, all the other things that go behind you know, moving. So I wanted the right tools and I knew I needed to hitch my wagon to a product that was going to be innovative. I wanted new solutions to manage associates associates that I'd not had an opportunity to manage. I actually became an articling principal at the same time. So this is all in December of 2024, looking forward to the new year. I wanted to answer this question. How could I devote myself to the large blocks of time required to solve higher value problems? Not just in the contested space, but in those court applications that even as real estate lawyers, we routinely come into um, encounter with. You know, that could be the court application to pay into court to discharge that mortgage when the private lender gives you a fraudulent statement. You want to have the, the gun uh, power to fight certain battles. And it is extremely difficult when you're running a transactional practice. Could I manage new associates and ask those individuals to support me in these higher value problems? So I took a chance on Leap and what I can say, the first encounters with Leap was the machine loved to take that data. So what that means is um, inbound and outbound correspondences, um, both with myself and my associates are being automatically linked to my matter. And if anyone has had to convert an email to a PDF just to make sure that they have a timestamped copy of a correspondence that they might have to rely on later, you have to know that 
that's no longer a part of my workflow. Every email is automatically recorded as long as I've linked that email to the matter and that's a, a click of a button. What that also means is for my associates who are helping me in contested work or, or trickier files, that they're able to you know, get that data into the system that then I can review. So earlier, uh, the panelists had talked, and it was Doug, had talked about how AI, and specifically LawY, which is one of the, the, the products that Leap has, how it can be like a, a training ground for new associates. I didn't have the time to be able to necessarily be the first point of contact when a problem or a novel practice uh, question uh, was on our table. So by taking um, LawY, I was able to get my associates to test their understanding of the problem first before they come to me. And so Lauren and Connor are, are sitting here. So you guys probably may be sick of me saying this, but they'll come to ask me a question. I don't even flinch. I say, what did Law Wise tell you? Like, what, what, what do you have on the table that you can bring me? I feel like I can actually be a better supervisor by encouraging them to explore their own and test their own theories of how they can solve problems in a very low risk environment. So what's happened with Law Y is not, not only can Matter AI summarize uh, communications with uh, our, our clients, we can test research and theories against AI. So that allows rough draft production, it allows me to get documents quickly produced, even if they're not sure what does this look like, well, <laughs> what does our software think it should look like? That's the first step in most of my, my files now. This is one of the things that I didn't expect, and I know we're kind of using AI loosely here. This is an automation, not specifically AI. But when I'm working in a matter, my time and my associate's time is automatically tracked. I mean, it's a revolution. We're not manually docketing entries. At least there's minimal docketing of entries. And so what I'm seeing is I can take a flat rate file. You know, sometimes if you, if you try to quote an hourly, people will say, well, what's it, what's it gonna cost me? Uh, okay, probably this. And then you look back, you go, oh wow, that was not enough. I get to test and see, did I win the wager? If I take a contingency file, uh, recently brought an application, partition and sale, did it on contingency, I made a nice stack. But I actually got to see how much time it took for me to get there. And it was nice to know that I'm getting a return on my time. I see my business scaling real time and I don't have to worry about the extra layer and the stress of docketing my time. So that's my quote. Uh, I use Matter AI when responding to clients who are upset or have unique circumstances and expectations. I think we've all had clients who are unique. And uh, if they're upset, it's tough to respond. At the end of the day, you're very tired, you wanna go home. How can you maintain that that standard of professionalism when you're not sure if your client's just being problematic for the fun of it. And we've all felt it. Uh, AI will always have a compassionate tone. So the more I feel I don't want to respond to someone, the more I know I have to get in to some AI tool that allows me to keep a professional tone. And when you trust the judgment of the objective, compassionate tone that AI can bring, I think you've set the standard for your own uh, interactions with your clients. So these are some things that have not changed, okay? AI has helped me generate the uh, picture of a, uh, a trustworthy farmer. Um, he knows what's good for the cattle, and as lawyers we know that clients still need a phone call. Um, AI drafts aren't gonna make them trust you. Um, and you can't have blind reliance on, on cases. I think it's pretty clear that if you aren't able to actually read a case for yourself and go to the reasons for a decision and, and see what maybe AI is trying to guide you towards for yourself, if you don't have that discretion, then AI can't save you, unfortunately. You will actually need to be able to do some legal analysis on your own. Um, and also formatting, because as much as, and actually, Michael, you have AI prompts, which I haven't even explored uh, uh, yet, and I know that they're coming, uh, and they're, they're here. Um, I know that formatting is improving with AI, but my own experience is if you wanted something double-spaced with indents and footnotes, you might not get that the first go around if you're using a tool like Generator. So what does future-proofing your law firm mean? And I think it was Doug from Hall & Hall who said, oh, it's gonna be possibly a mad scramble when people realize just how transformative this is. I have to echo that sentiment. 
what is the mad scramble? Like, what are we actually after as lawyers? And what will the future of our practice look like? What is the machinery that we want? How will the gears grind together? The smartest people are thinking about these problems, right? So if the smartest people are putting their energy into AI to solve workflow and efficiency problems, you might want to take a peek at what's happening uh, by exploring AI tools now, uh, you'll be able to shape what you want from AI. And, and the thing that, the, the mistake that I think people make when they're wondering, is AI right for me, is you're allowed to cherry pick. If, if, a, if a program has a suite of tools, it, it's not an all or nothing. You can cherry pick, you can dabble, you can test. You might be amazed. Okay, that letter that comes in at the final minute that you, you're not really sure how to read or respond to, why don't you start from the AI draft and build out from that? You're not getting stalled out. And I think that's the part that people need to understand. You can cherry pick what you want and how you want it to shape your practice. Uh, and uh, the last piece, I'm not sure if, I'm, uh, if, if I have a big enough team to speak to this because larger teams may have more to say on this. Um, a culture of adoption, I think if you build that culture out, and again, I'm speaking from two associates myself, if that culture is there, you might be sensitive to how your consumer needs are changing because if those are the problems they're encountering in their workplace, whether you're doing employment law, corporate, if, if AI is something that's a part of what we're doing as a culture, then you're probably gonna be relevant when you're speaking to your clients and, and, the, and the challenges that they're facing. So I think it could help you stay nimble if you're willing to take a chance and you're willing to test it out just to see how it works for you you might have better conversations on the golf course with your clients. That's all I'm saying. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for that. Uh, I, I'm wondering how you selected the tools that you did uh, amid what I'd call a glut of products. I basically have perplexity as my homepage. If I'm not answering a legal problem, I'm trying to use AI in just general things. Um, I think I, I was working with Claude for a bit just to see if I could, I wanted to code my own agreement of purchase and sale kind of reader, but Closer beat me to that. So <laughs> I, don't, I didn't need Claude anymore. Um, you know, the thing about it is there's a lot of piecemeal tools, including like time trackers. You know, I can't even remember the name of some of the products that I've used. Um, for, for docketing your time. But when you see that there's a program and Leap specifically that kind of consolidates all of these tools into one, so your emails are coming into the matter, you can, you can um, summarize your uh, you know, interim reporting. If you wanna know what you've done for a client, you know that you can get that data. So knowing that all of those pieces were tied together, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I think I spent 10 minutes in a de demonstration with one of the Leap reps and I said, this is it. Like I, I knew that this was the one. I'm not going to speak on behalf of Lee, but I will, I will say this. Uh, I think that you are 100% right. There are probably hundreds of tools out there. And it's, it's kind of, and I've always said this, you've got to go and look at what's out there. But the, your first main objective is to find out what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to achieve? And find tools that actually achieve what you want. If you have a clear vision of what you want for your own business or for your own law firm, then you, you kind of find the tools that, um, that, that meet that particular goal is probably what I would say. But there's many tools out there. Do as much research as possible. Uh, find and look at every possible tool out there uh, and then see what works best for you. Um, in the previous panels, they were talking about like our obligations from a practice perspective. I'm really interested, like given the adoption that you have used, do you think those obligations should be more catered to AI adoption? Well, professional obligations are number one enhanced um, because communication, if you look at, I don't have the stats, so I'll make them up. If you, <laughs> if you look at law pros, you know, the, the percentages of claims that come against lawyers for negligence, communication, failure to communicate, it's up there. I guess I won't have to make up a number, 30%. 30% of claims are failure to communicate. So if communication is, is, a, is a pain point between counsel and their client, then why aren't we looking at tools that make that easier? So, I mean, in terms of obligations, I think we have an obligation to communicate firstly. So if a tool enhances that, um, if there are drawbacks, we can, we can address those, but um, yeah, professionalism is, is, is enhanced in my mind. I don't know if that answered the question, but that's how I feel about it.
If I may ask a question in the room, how many firms are actually using AI in your practice now? That's pretty good. Is everybody using ChatGPT or you're using actual law products? Yeah, there's a, there's a distinct difference, I think, between using open chat GPT and actually using uh, software that is developed for lawyers. Um, and the hallucination pieces kind of disappear when you're using software of that particular, particular kind where it's built for a particular law firm. We're looking at the right law websites. We understand what the law does. Uh, we understand what the law says. We have researchers that uh, actually look at this. Um, I'll give you a typical example. Leap and now I'll speak on behalf of Leap here, we've taken a very, probably the right word is a responsible approach to this, is that we have ensured that we have actual human verifiers that verify the answer, even if you get it and you're unsure. We have a human verifier, a lawyer, qualified lawyer in your province, uh, in your area of law that's been practicing for a number of years that will verify this information. So we've, we, we are not going out into open AI and trying to figure out what AI says about it, but we do want to make sure that we are verifying and what is absolutely accurate is what we're trying to give you. Um, so that is probably one of the probably most important questions we normally get asked is, is this open chat GPT? It's not. I was actually shocked that when Malcolm asked who uses AI, not everybody's hand didn't go up. Um, I think AI has been a big buzz today. Um, it's very clear that AI is here um, and it's here to stay. It's a fast moving train. If you're not getting on AI now, you are gonna be left behind. It's just a reality. It's shaping the legal landscape. It's shaping the way that we practice. So we need to understand AI, use it responsibly and start, and start that now. Because if not, your competitors are using it and you know, they're gonna, their practice is gonna be much more productive and efficient than yours. And you just won't be able to compete with these law firms and other lawyers who are using AI in their practice day to day. Thank you.